In this video, we will be demonstrating the management of an unstable hip fracture. These are typically going to occur in your elderly patient population, and this is being done with the assumption that you've completed your head-to-toe assessment. So we've already checked PMS on the upper extremities and the lower extremities. We've already applied a collar to the patient, and now we are managing the injury in the secondary assessment portion. In order to treat this unstable hip fracture, we will be using blankets to pad underneath the injury as well as around the injury. So we'll start with our initial blanket, folding it in place. Again, we've done our head to toe assessment. We've checked PMS. Also, again, these injuries are typically evidenced by shortening and external rotation of the injured extremity. Now, when you're applying this padding, you want to make sure that you minimize movement of that extremity as much as possible as to decrease the amount of pain that the patient is experiencing. So we'll go ahead and wrap around like this just to create a padding around the injury as well as to prevent movement of the extremity. Now that we have this in place, you could take some duct tape and just tape over certain parts of this makeshift splint in order to minimize motion. Now I'm going to have my partner with a scoop stretcher disconnect that scoop stretcher will split it in half. I'll take one half over here. Again, making sure that we don't pass anything over the patient. Also, if you have another person on scene, they could be applying an ice pack to that injury. Now, when we apply the scoop stretcher, I'd like to get the feet first. So, moving the non-injured extremity to the top of the scoop stretcher, we can attach this portion of the stretcher. I'll be managing the leg while my partner manages both the head of the patient and the two halves of the scoop stretcher. I just, again, want to make sure that we are not moving this any more than is absolutely necessary. Now we will be putting in these two halves of the scoop stretcher very slowly. There's no need to rush through this process. This mannequin is very light compared to an actual patient. So it looks easy while we're demoing it, because it is on an actual patient. You need to be much more careful. It'll take a little bit longer. But as long as you minimize the movement onto the backboard, it'll decrease the amount of pain your patient experiences. Once we get them strapped in here, we can recheck PMS on the lower extremities. So dorsalis pedis pulse here. Also on these injuries, since you will be frequently rechecking PMS, it's common practice to either circle or put an X over where you found the pulse. So we'll recheck the pulse, have them wiggle their toes, and assess for light touch and pain. Now that they're on the scoop stretcher, we can transfer them onto the gurney. We'll actually leave them on the scoop stretcher throughout the duration of the transport as to ease movement from our gurney to the hospital bed once we arrive at the appropriate facility.